Welcome to my lecture online. So here we have the same problem we did on the previous video, but now we're going to take use of these general equations for the range, the height, and the time in the air for projectile motion. So here we have the range going from the starting point to the end point when the starting and the end is at the same elevation. Here we have the height reached of a projectile and there we have the time in the air when a projectile falls from a height equal to h with gravitational attraction or gravitational acceleration equal to g. Remember now in this problem that once the projectile reaches its maximum height it now enters a region with a different acceleration due to gravity, a great acceleration due to gravity and the projectile will hit the ground sooner than it would have. So normally it would have covered, covered the entire distance d, but now it's going to be some fraction of d. We're looking for the fraction of d. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to find out how high the projectile went on its way up. And so we'll use this equation right here. So we can then say that the height reached is equal to the initial velocity squared times the sine of 2 theta Oh, not 2 theta, that's the square, that's the other one. Square of theta divided by 2g. Now, how long did it take to get to the top? The time to get to the top. So this is to the top, right? To the top. The time that it took to get to the top is equal to the square root of 2h divided by g. Now, once we reach that top, now how long will it take to come back down? Of course, it will take less time to come back down because g will be larger. And so let's call this T1, and now we're going to find T2. So T2 is going to be equal to the square root of 2h divided by g divided by 0.81, which can be written as the square root of 2h times 0.81, I'll put that in parentheses, divided by g. So, what I can then do is I can now find the ratio of T2 to T1. And the ratio of T2 to T1 is going to be the square root of 2h times 0.81 divided by g, and divide this by the square root of 2h over g. And right away you see that the 2h's cancel out, that the g's cancel out, and it's simply, this will become 1, it simply becomes the square root of 0.81 which is equal to 0 0.9, which means it only took 90% of the time to reach the ground again compared to the time that it took to go up. So therefore, we can now say that the distance is going to be 1 half d for the first half of the trip plus 0 0.9 times 1 half d for the second half of the trip. Why 0.9? Because you only get 9 tenths the time before you hit the ground again on the second half. So this becomes d is equal to 0.5d plus 0.45d, and therefore d is equal to 0.95d. And of course, we're looking at d prime, the new distance, and notice that's 0.95 the old distance, so therefore n equals 0.95. And notice how much faster you can do the problem if you remember these three equations of kinematics, and of course, in particular, when you remember this equation right here. Now, that's an easy equation to figure out if you keep the, um, if you uh, use end of the energy equation, for example, you can say that mgh is equal to one half mv squared, so when all the potential energy at the top converts to kinetic energy, and the m's cancel out, and notice that h is equal to, oh, uh, v squared, I'm sorry one half mv squared, forgot the square. So now we can say that uh, h is equal to, um, oh, I'll take that back. I'll take that back. That's, I'm thinking about another relationship and that's for the velocity at the bottom. We don't need the velocity at the bottom. No relationship there to the thing I was just thinking about. So ignore what I just did, ignore what I just said. That's for another thing. This is good enough. And remember, this equation right here will help you solve this equation in a jiffy, so to speak. And you can do this problem in less than three minutes if you can think of the right equation to use. And that is how it's done much quicker than the previous video.